Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant, and congratulations, you get to work from home. And if you've been doing this for any length of time, you know that it's probably not all it's cracked up to be, right? You've, we've all had those days where we end it and we go, did I really get anything done? Or maybe you feel like it's there's just constant distractions or work seems to just expand to fill the time. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you five actionable tactics that I've learned and implemented over the past three and a half years of working from home, timestamp table of contents in the description, along with some other helpful videos to help you stay productive throughout your day. So the very first tactic we have is setting the intention, and that is waking up and going through your morning routine. If you don't have one, I'll link up to mine. There are plenty of other videos that talk about it, but essentially you want your morning to function as if you were physically going to leave the house. Because while you, it's awesome that you get to work from home and you can just roll out of bed and go straight to your desk, all we're doing is eliminating the commute time. So you don't have to sit on the bus or the train or sit in traffic for two and a half hours. That's the only difference in your morning. So what this means is we go through and we make our bed. Anything we would have to do when we would leave the house anyway we do, we actually put on our work clothes, right? So dress for success. I know I every once in a while I get comments of, Jason, why on earth do you wear sweaters and collared shirts all the time? You're at home, like nobody's looking at you, right? But the way that you set the intention for the day and when you act like you're actually going to go to work, it's triggering your mind and it's signaling to anyone else in the house that you're actually taking this seriously. That's going to be very important when we get to step number three. Now, number two deals with the interesting dynamic that you have to deal with as someone who's working from home. And that is the difference between manager time and maker time. So very briefly, manager time is being like your own boss or working on all of that administrative planning stuff. Whereas maker time is when you're actually doing the work that is valuable to your business or your clients, and you have to separate those. So simply what this means is either at the end of the previous day or on Sunday night, you plan out exactly what you're going to do as a manager. So this is an interesting technique that I've developed and essentially during my manager time, I look at all of the tasks that I have and I pretend like I'm the manager of myself. So if I was the manager, what would I tell that worker, which is me or you in this case, to do with their time over the week. And that's how I plan out the to-do lists and my time blocks. If you're not quite sure what time blocking is, I'll link to a video in the description about that because that's a whole nother video, right? But essentially you want your manager time to be very scheduled so you are always planning for how your day is going to look. If you wanna go hit the gym or you wanna go see the movies at three o'clock in the afternoon, awesome, great. But it's important that you plan that ahead of time so that you have a consistent structure to your day. Now, number three is going to be a bunker, the bunker technique. And this is actually something that's talked a lot about in The One Thing by Gary Keller. I'll link up the book in the description because this is an absolute goldmine when it comes to getting more done and becoming a productivity monster. Here, I'm just going to talk about the bunker and I'm actually going to flip to the back of the book here where he actually includes something that to go on your home office door. And you don't have to be this extreme, but essentially when you go to work, everyone else in the household needs to know that it's your work time and you are not to be disturbed. And the better you do with your planning and your manager time, the more you can communicate to other people who are either in the house or out of the house and just want to text you and ask what they should pick up for groceries on the way home, know when you're actually going to be checking your phone and when you are and aren't going to be available. Something that I personally do because I've never lived in more than a one bedroom apartment, right? So my office has always been in the corner of the living room. In fact, the last three years, I've lived in studios. So what my wife and I have set up is I simply say, I'm plugging in when she happens to be at home while I'm still working. And even if I'm not listening to music, which I don't always do, she knows that if I do this, is work time and she shouldn't be asking me any questions. And of course, because I'm an OCD person, she can always look at my calendar and know when my next free time block is. Now, I know it doesn't have to be as extreme as that. I know I'm quite a weird person when it comes to this type of stuff. And yes, it drives my family a little crazy at times. But what's most important is you make sure that when you're at your desk, wherever that space may be, you don't have to go get a whole nother room, right, in your apartment. This was not reasonable for my budget and might not be reasonable for yours. But you have to have a space where everyone knows when you're there, you're in a bunker and you're not to be disturbed. 
even if it's just a quick question. Now, the fourth one has to do with your brakes. And this is another area that is so, so easy to lose a tremendous amount of time on. And if you've ever worked in a corporate environment, you know, this is kind of like the water cooler talk, right? Where you get up to go to the bathroom, you get up to grab another cup of coffee, or you're grabbing your snack or your lunch, and you run into somebody and you wind up talking to them for 10 or 20 minutes, and then you come back to your desk and wow, like uh, just like that, a half hour is gone. So luckily, if no one else is at home while you're working, you probably don't have to deal with this. But if anyone else is at home, what I highly recommend doing is actually setting an alarm for however long your break is, and then when you're planning your time, plan what you're going to do during that break. And what I do personally is I will make sure that during that break, I maintain that bunker cone of silence. So that means no phone checking, no social media. I don't turn on the TV and hey, you know what? You're at home. So if you want to quickly clean something, you want to quickly do the dishes, throw some clothes in the laundry. That's awesome. Great. Take advantage of that fully, but make sure that you are very, very strict with how much time you spend before you go back into your bunker, because this is one of the areas that is so, so easy to mess up and just realize that, oh no, I spent 40 minutes doing X, Y, Z when I thought it was only going to take two. So it's very important that you really protect your time. You can go so far as to pre-do your meals. That's something that I used to do. And it's just going to depend on what you want to do with your breaks. What's most important is that you make sure that there's a timer so you get back to your desk and back to your bunker when it's important. Now, tactic number five here is something that's also going to be very important if you're the type of person who has trouble turning off. If you're the type of person who can easily just switch off and bounce out of work, well then, great. For the rest of us, we're going to need a set end routine. And this is something that you do at the end of each day to signal to yourself that the day is over and that work is over and it's time to transition into whatever else is going to go on for the rest of the day. And the reason that this is so important is because with a traditional job, you have a commute home. And that commute home is actually, whether you intend to have it or not, is a trigger to your mind and your body that work is over and then you can transition into whatever else you're doing. So here we have to artificially do that. So here are a couple of things you can do at the end of each day to make sure you signal to your body and signal to your mind that the day is over. So quickly rapid fire here, you can have the last hour of the day as communication. So you can go through meetings with clients, go through chats with your team, check on your email. You can even have it planning out your next day. Maybe you go and hit the gym or if you want to be really, really brain hack, you can actually use a specific song. So if you've ever seen the movie Inception, you'll know that when they were supposed to come out of the dream, they'd start playing a specific music, they'd start playing a specific song. Well, you can actually do this. Choose a song that's not popular, and then at the end of each day, right after you've closed your laptop, just listen to it. I know it sounds funny, but if you do that every single day, after a few weeks, when you listen to that song, your entire body will instantly relax. It will instantly turn off because as soon as it hears that song, it's triggering in your brain to go, oh, it's time to turn off and you'll be able to relax. And I highly recommend that if you're the type of person, you're an A-type personality like myself, and it's just really hard to pull away and say, oh, I have one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. As soon as you have that song play, you can relax and get on with the rest of your day. So I sincerely hope you found some value out of this video. And most importantly, you have at least one or two things you can start implementing now to work more effectively from home. It's definitely not as easy as everyone makes it out to be. We all struggle with bleed time and taking breaks and staying effective and staying focused, especially when there's other things around the house or other people around the house that are distracting us. So go ahead and comment below if you have anything to add or subtract from this list because your personal insights and experience is going to help other people who are trying to work from home be more successful in their business and careers. So go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe for more productivity videos just like this one, and until the next, keep building the business you love.